Hey, beautiful people, if you had a sound card in the late 90s, early 2000s, it probably looked a lot like this guy. PCI, not Express, old school. Might have even said Sound Blaster on it. And if you flip it over to the business end, you get things like line in, line out, microphone, rear out, maybe a joystick, MIDI controller. And that's kind of a problem if you need pro audio, because in order for an audio interface to be considered pro, you need at least one thing on the card that you don't know what it does. For example, something like this. This is a Digigram VX222 V2. Still PCI, but let's flip it over to the business end. You got one thing that you recognize, right? That's a headphone jack. But these other two things, no idea what they do. Clearly a pro sound card. And don't even get me started on things like this RME 9632. Take a look at that nonsense. On the business end, geez, that's so pro, I wouldn't even know where to start. The system worked great, right up until Apple started selling a lot. And I mean a lot of PCs without expansion slots. With no expansion, USB and Firewire were your only options. And with USB 1.1, you were kind of stuck with things like this. This is a DigiDesign M-Box 2. Solid little device for its day, but being USB 1.1, you were limited to a sample rate of 48K, and you only got two inputs and two outputs. Not much to it. Then 2001 rolled around and Motu released this guy. This is the Motu 828. This is the first Firewire audio interface. Let's do a reveal. Ta-da! Yeah. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Unless you compare it to the like inbox 2 that we just looked at. Because unlike this, this has eight inputs, eight outputs. I'm um, starting over here on the left. We even have phantom power, so we have two mic preamps. And then we have these three banks. This is a little unusual. This is, these are banked together, but uh, there is amplification for channel inputs three and four, five, six, and seven and eight. We have analog activity, nice little bank of LEDs showing you, you know, channels one through eight, input and output, if you have signal coming through it. Over on the right, you have your SPDIF in and out, and you have your optical in and out, which is gonna be for your ADAT. I'll explain that in just a second. And two clock rates, you know, early days, 2001, so we had 44.1 and 48K. On the back, it got really interesting though. Starting on the right, we have left and right up. We got two combo jacks, uh, two microphones, one thing that does kind of date it is maxed out uh, the, the mic preamps uh, for about 40 dB, which was kind of anemic even back in 2001, but it's what you got. But that's going to work for a condenser mic or if you wanted to, you know, throw a preamp before and just run it line in, you'll be good. Speaking of line ends, quarter inch balanced, one through eight and uh, quarter inch balanced, one through eight on your outputs. We got a punch in, punch out. First time seeing that. Firewire 1394. That's how we're going to be connecting it. Then we have SPDIF, which is going to be two channels in and out over digital. You're probably familiar with these over the years. ADAT sync in. If you happen to have an ADAT machine, this will allow you to sync directly to the interface. And this is where it gets a little more interesting. Maybe you're not familiar with this. This is going to look kind of familiar, but it's different. ADAT or SPDIF. Now we can do SPDIF over this, you know, over a RCA type connection, which is fine. Or we can do optical spit if you might be familiar with that if you have like a multi-channel soundbar that you plug into a receiver that runs in but we can also do adat adat allows each of these ports over light pipe to do eight channels at 48k so i can do eight channels in eight channels out now you're probably thinking to yourself then this is a firewire interface so you're going to break out like a vintage windows xp box or some old imac type thing nay we're going to be doing this with Linux and we're going to be doing this not on, let's say, a vintage Athlon 2, you know, X240. No, we're not. We're going to be using this with a modern-ish. I guess AM4 is not quite considered vintage just yet. 5600G. And we're going to be making this magic happen using one of these. Ooh, look at it. It's so retro. Well, I guess the Molex connector is kind of retro. You don't see that a lot. But as you might have noticed, that's PCI Express. That's not PCI. This is going to work in any modern PC with an open expansion slot. And you're going to get two 800 ports. That's a little crazy looking ones up here. And the 400 port that we're going to be using for this audio interface. Pretty cool, huh? So let's go get it plugged in and see how it works. This is normally the part of the video where I tell you to just nope the ALSA drivers and install FATO, but not this time. You see, the FATO drivers can initialize the 828, but it doesn't pass audio. Kind of strange. But you're still going to need FATO Mixer to adjust your clock source, sample rate, and optical I.O. Here we are on Debian 12 running XFCE, and I have Pavu control open, so let's power this critter up. And that's it. 
Welcome to Linux. You see, the Firewire drivers are built into the Linux kernel, so what I just did was no exaggeration. Plug it in, power it on. Moving on to Jack using QJack CTL, make sure you have also selected for the driver and 828 for the interface. Let's give it a start. Looking at the graph, we have analog 1 through 8, 8 at 1 through 8, and two channels of spit off. Nice. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the very Reaper session that I use to mix and record our podcast, Linux Gamecast, with the help of my scientifically calibrated signal generator and recording six tracks of audio with the A28. I'm going to let this run for about 10 minutes and see if it generates any X runs, aka clicks or pops. And look at that clean bill of health for this 22 year old interface. Moving on to round trip latency, and yeah, it's a bit on the high side since we have to use the ALSA drivers and a buffer size of three. So you'll need to crank the frame size down to about 32 if you plan on using the 828 for real-time monitoring. Now you might think audio recorded on an interface from 2001 would sound a bit... poo. You know, compared to one from 2019. Let's find out. Turns out even by 2001, we kind of had the whole analog to digital conversion thing figured out. But I am curious, can you hear $220 worth of difference? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, that was kind of wild. Here we are 22 years later and we're still able to use the first FireWire interface. Why? Because Linux is cool like that. And this is where it started. So I think I need to show you where it ended seven years later. Motu released this guy. This is the 828 MK3, so this is the third generation of the 828. In fact, Motu still sells this critter, but what they've done is swap out the Fire Noodle with a Thunder Doodle, and they've scraped off the MK3 that we have here and replaced it with an axe. It even dies in the same way as this Motu 828 MK3. They have bad caps in the power supply. This one's kind of knackered. I can fix it. I just haven't gotten around to it. Now, fortunately, Motu has a ridiculously good out of warranty repair program. For 99 bucks, you can get a refurbished replacement interface, even if it's out of warranty, or at least you could until about like 2021 when the program ended. So you better hope that the display on your $1,000 interface dies within that two year warranty. And listen, that part genuinely bothers me when the company just refuses to sell replacement parts, especially for products that are still in production. It's like one of the reasons I started doing this series was to keep interfaces like these out of landfills. And by the way, these are the capacitor values if you want to fix your 828 MK3, your hybrid, or your X, or your Motu 8 Pre. That'll get you sorted. And if you need a wicked overkill audio interface, you probably want to go with another company that uses blue in their color scheme, RME. They'll sell you a new screen. Check that out. That's going to do it for this interfacing Linux. I want you to head over to our web zone. I have a full list of Linux compatible audio interfaces, linuxgamecast.com. And, you know, if you want to help fight the good fight by becoming a patron like these fine upstanding cannibals rolling by on the screen, I'd really appreciate that. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. But as always, leave your questions in the comments, like and subscribe. But most importantly, 
get out there and make something awesome.